Good happy Friday morning, April 1st, 2022. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Friday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's get started right now. First step, New Hampshire Fish and Game say watch out for amphibians this spring. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Wow. Pretty neat. So Very spring symbolic. arrives, New Hampshire Fish and Game, they're warning drivers to watch out for amphibians crossing the road. Oh, that's right. In the early days of spring, the warmer nights and rainy weather, they make it the perfect time for frogs and salamanders to hunt for a place to lay their eggs. Fishing Game says you can keep these little critters safe by avoiding smaller, darker roads near wetland habitats. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Undergraduate Dartmouth College students unionize. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Some undergraduate student workers at Dartmouth College have voted to unionize. Students who work at college dining halls started the union effort in January. Organizers say they hope to give those students a greater voice in decision making. Other concerns include mental health support and rising rents in the area. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Bedford police say they have identified purse-snatching suspect. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. After saving with customized car insurance from Liberty Mutual, I customize everything. Like Marco's backpack. Well, Tom, investigators say they now plan on making an arrest in the near future. They also tell us that the victim's purse has been found and returned to her. All of this thanks to some eyewitness video that helped police in their search. This quick video taken by a witness shows a man escaping on a white moped just moments after snatching a woman's purse. This lady is at the front of the store just yelling, someone took my, like, someone took my purse, like, my stuff is gone. It happened at Marshall's on South River Road in Bedford around 2.30 Thursday afternoon. As uh, we were talking to her, this guy from, like, the side of the store just comes and he leaves, like, scurries right out with like the alarms go off he has like three purses and like a big duffel bag of wh whoever knows like whatever's <laughs> in there and this runs out this group of students from michael's school of hair design was inside the store at the time and followed the thief out to try and snap some photos of him i just wanted to get the license plate number to give to the cops we were already on the phone with the police and i figured if they had more information they might find him easier and they did and i guess i got him like driving away with everyone's stuff. Bedford police say the thief took a few items from the store, including a purse that was on display before then nabbing a purse from a 61-year-old woman's shopping cart. After a brief struggle, he was able to make it out of the store and onto a bike. It's like a all-white moped with, like, light blue. blue. And Bedford police say they still want to hear from witnesses or anyone who recognizes that suspect. They're asking people to call the department with more information. Live in Bedford tonight, Scott Cook, WMUR. News okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire state-run vaccine sites permanently closed. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. The doors are now closed for good. New Hampshire's 11 fixed vaccine sites shutting down tonight after three months and 20,000 shots administered. We received 
tremendous feedback from the community that they were caring, that it was convenient. And so we feel like it was an incredible success to be able to stand those up. About 61% of Granite Staters are now fully vaccinated. And as COVID cases dropped, the demand for vaccines has too. The state says 6,000 vaccines were given in January compared to fewer than 1,000 this month. But people can still find them at hospitals, pharmacies, urgent care centers, and some doctor's offices. We're certainly standing by the ready, watching that data, and we will be ready to act if we see that those cases begin to go up again. Resources are limited. People do tend to shut things down as things get better. But we have to be ready to move things back up again. Dr. Tom Inglesby is on the White House's COVID response team. He cautions other countries are seeing case numbers rise, but says it's hard to predict whether we could see the same in the United States. I think all of us have to really uh, enjoy this moment, enjoy the time ahead and, and be happy of moving towards normalcy, but also be resilient in the sense that things could happen that require us to change directions for a bit. The federal government just rolled out a brand new website on all things COVID, including vaccines. You can read more for yourself on covid.gov. Meantime, the state is scaling back four of its seven mobile vaccine vans. However, three of them will remain in service. Reporting live in Manchester, Mike Cronin, WMUR News. Oh, this is going to look so good. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Biden announces order to release 180 M barrels of oil. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. And we begin with that major announcement from President Biden with gas prices soaring at the highest level since 2008. American families are feeling the pinch. The president ordering the release of 180 million barrels of oil from the nation's emergency supply, a record 1 million barrels per day for six months, predicting the painful price of the pump will go down fairly significantly. But still, there are questions about how soon struggling Americans could feel some relief. ABC's chief business and economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis leads us off. Tonight, with gasoline near record highs, President Biden promising to lower prices with the largest ever release of oil from the nation's strategic petroleum reserve. One million barrels a day for the next six months, up to 180 million barrels total. There isn't enough supply. And the bottom line is, if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. The additional supplies accounting for about 5% of America's daily consumption. Analysts blame forces like the pandemic and political uncertainty for a drop in U.S. oil production in recent years. I'm calling for a use it or lose it policy. Congress should make companies pay fees on wells on federal leases they haven't used in years. With the national average now $4.23, the price of a gallon of gas up $1.36 from a year ago and up more than 60 cents in just the last month since Russia invaded Ukraine. We have seen some measure of relief in the last couple of weeks. Oil prices have backed off of the high. Uh, as a result of the SPR announcement today, the downturn could accelerate and the national average could fall back under $4 a gallon as long as nothing changes over the next three weeks. In California, where gas is now $5.90 a gallon, the most expensive in the nation, relief can't come soon enough. This is insane. What do they think we are, all Rockefellers? Sergio Arredondo says it's getting difficult to fill up his company's trucks. You look at $600 to fill up that truck. It's all going up and up and up. When is it going to stop? And that's exactly what people want to know. Let's bring in Rebecca Jarvis. And Rebecca, give us a sense of how long it could take for Americans to feel some relief at the pump and how much could prices fall? Well, we, we should start to see this fairly quickly as oil prices, which are the main driver of what you pay at the pump, have also been falling on this news. But analysts warn that prices might not get much farther below $4 a gallon, that this measure was really intended and will really help to keep prices from getting to that $5 a gallon level. Wit. All right, Rebecca, thank you. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great day, everyone, and goodbye.